Online is an indie game developed by two people, heavily inspired by Game Boy slash Game Boy Color action adventure games, Link's Awakening being the prime example of this. And in essence, Online is a 2D action adventure game full of conventions of the genre like an overworld to explore, characters to talk to, dungeons to get through by solving puzzles, and bosses to beat. So what's it all about? In Anodyne, we take control of Young. It is implied that the world that we explore is his subconscious. At the beginning, we meet with a character called the Sage that gives us instructions about navigating the Nexus, this large area full of portals that takes us to various locations we've already been to. He also explains our purpose here. We are this hero, the chosen summoned to save the land from the darkness, that's trying to get a hold of the Briar's power to use for evil. We have to stop the darkness by traversing the dungeons and beating the bosses in order to protect the Briar. A very traditional plot, very akin to these kinds of games. In order to progress though, it is mandatory to find a certain amount of these cards scattered throughout the game. This is our main collectible and second most important objective. Anodyne's world is full of wonder, mystery and interesting interactions. Its quirky, funny, at times odd and adult but real sense of humor really stands out. This sense of humor is a nice complement to its weirder yet ambiguous atmosphere. The places you visit range from the calm and serenity of a beach to a dreading and ominous space where strange geometrical shaped characters hang around. Anodyne's world is not visually cohesive or coherent, but it is in themes, ambience and overall charm. Anodyne is a game with a very noticeable visual appeal. It's Game Boy slash Game Boy Color pixel art and aesthetic to be precise, something that will absolutely draw many players' attention. Music-wise, it's not limited to a cheap tune or Game Boy-inspired and samey sound. Instead, Anodyne makes each area sound distinct and different by having a very atmospheric and ambient-driven soundtrack. Not to say there are no catchy melodies here and there, but these are more catchy as in soothing and calming more than anything. Gameplay-wise, it's what you'll expect. Maybe not quite, though. Of course, you travel through the land by walking. Later on, you'll also get an item that allows you to jump, similar to the feather in Link's Awakening. Your way of attacking is a broom. <laughs> That's your weapon. You'll get different upgrades as you go along. There are three in total, two of which serve a different form of attacking, while the third one having a different purpose all around. With it, you'll attack enemies and catch dust as well, just like a broom does. Dust will allow you to solve different puzzles and get through the dungeons and overworld in some cases, sort of like a vehicle. Game mechanics from a general point of view are very comparable and similar to Link's Awakenings. Every dungeon has a gimmick of its own, from speed panels to standard switches that turn obstacles on and off. These gimmicks are introduced carefully at the beginning and escalate as you traverse and go through the map right until you reach the boss. Some of the later dungeons even combine and mix these gimmicks. It feels incredibly rewarding to master them. I found myself revisiting some dungeons to find any missing cards and it felt like a breeze due to having mastered those gimmicks. About the bosses, difficulty-wise I found them rather easy, especially at the beginning, but some, I have to say, are tough and definitely become moderately challenging as you reach the end of the game. So far so good, huh? Well, Anodyne has some problems of its own too. There are some glaring issues with invincibility frames. What I mean is after you get hit, sometimes you become completely invulnerable for a bit, while other times you can get hit multiple times without having those frames of invincibility. It's hard to catch on footage as it is something you almost likely experience at random times, and it has to do with how the character feels and his movement after getting hit. Precise platforming, and I mean jumping, tends to be somewhat tedious as Young easily misses the platform and slides to the side, which is weird considering how accurate it feels calculating your jump. But I mean, after a while you'll get the hang of it and just learn how to make your jumps. Still, the issue is there nonetheless. Also, some dungeons tend to extend a bit too much for my liking, sometimes feeling monotonous. The lack of direction in dungeons might keep some players from progressing efficiently, right to the point of getting stuck, something that I experienced myself once or twice. This lack of direction is also consistent throughout the game. Anodyne is a very non-linear type of game. You can beat dungeons in any order and progress as long as you have the exact amount of cards. This is not a bad thing per se, but I just wanted to mention it as some players could find it a bit too confusing or overwhelming. Something else. <laughs> a little bonus, I don't know, I just found this glitch.
There's definitely more to talk about, but to keep it as informative and brief as possible, I'll leave it at that. Anodyne takes inspiration from a well-known source, but creates its own unique and charming identity in the process. Digging deeper into Anodyne, you'll find a unique and fun experience as you drown in its themes and motifs of loneliness, isolation and social awkwardness that further propel the sentiment of overcoming something big just to finally come out as a hero. It is definitely something you have to experience by yourself in order to determine if you like it or not, but even so, 2D pixel art retro adventure and puzzle aficionados will enjoy and appreciate much of what Anodyne has to offer. If by any means something of what's described here grabs your attention, then waste no more time and give this analgesic productions gem a try.